Hi, I'm Lauren Nightingale, and I'm going to talk about bean anthracnose caused by the pathogen Caletotrichum lindemuthianum. This disease affects crucial legume crops in the Phaseolus genre, such as snap beans, lima beans, scarlet runner beans, mung beans, cow peas, and broad beans. These host crops are most easily identified by their distinct fruit or bean pods, sealed containers for seeds that may split along the seam at maturity. Bean anthracnose is recognized in an assessment of pest management by Gerard Pinenberg et al. in 2011 as one of the most devastating diseases in dry bean production worldwide, as it can reduce yield by up to 95% and reduce product quality by directly infecting the marketable seeds. When the seeds purchased for growing the crop are infected, it can lead to poor germination or seedlings infected with dark brown, sunken lesions on cotyledons and stems that stunt growth or kill the plant. Under wet conditions, the pathogen then produces masses of pink spores within these lesions that disperse via wind and water to infect other nearby hosts. Symptoms of infections in these older host plants generally occur on the underside of leaves as lines of dark red lesions on leaf veins. As the disease progresses, this discoloration will spread to the upper leaf surface and is easier to see. The most obvious symptom of disease is the reddish-brown blemishes that appear on beans and pods. If these get wet post-harvest, the fungus produces more pink spores that can spread throughout the batch. Moisture is required by this fungus for its germination, development, dispersal, and host infection. Prolonged wet periods are required for the disease to become established, and it prefers temperatures between 18 to 25 degrees Celsius. Outside of this range, symptoms in the host may be delayed or prevented. Temperate zones like southern Ontario have the ideal temperature and high rainfall for this disease to thrive. There are multiple races for this disease, which reduces the usefulness of resistant cultivars as they are unlikely to be resistant to more than one race. For example, Wellington wonder beans are resistant to the most common race of bean anthracnose, but are severely affected by other races. The best way to prevent bean anthracnose is by using certified disease-free seed or seed grown in semi-arid areas with little rainfall, such as Idaho where the disease is not a problem, but these seeds are often highly expensive. Using clean seed is the most crucial step in prevention, but if that is not possible, then management with seed treatments coupled with multiple foliar applications of fungicides such as pyroclostrobin or azoxystrobin as the crop begins to bloom can be effective to reduce losses. Field disturbances should be avoided when the crops are wet as it can help spread the spores throughout the field. The pathogen can survive in plant debris for up to two years, so crop rotations of at least two years are recommended. Infected plants should be removed and destroyed if possible, or simply incorporated into soil to reduce winter survival. Finally, avoid packing any diseased seed pods with healthy seed pods, as it can spread during transport. By following these guidelines, the potential damage caused by bean anthracnose can be avoided. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this video informative.